apologies for keeping you waiting. Uh, uh, just been one of those days when I've gone from meetings to meetings to meetings. I'm running a little bit behind schedule. We had thought we'd be here on time, but it wasn't possible. So thank you for that. Uh, can I introduce to you Assistant Commissioner Paul Stewart? Uh, Paul is in charge of our Information Communications Technology Division uh, here in the Queensland Police Service, based here, of course, at Police Headquarters. Uh, there are at least two things we wanted to talk about today. The first was a, uh, an error in our computer system, a human error in terms of some data that was um, put in wrongly and had a certain result, and we'll go through that with you. And I see you've been given the media release, and I'd just like to go through that with you and add a little bit more information uh, to what is in the media release. And the second uh, was a request for your support and assistance with the road toll, which I'm really worried about. Uh, Whilst uh, August is not yet finished until midnight tonight, it's the worst month this year and um, the number of young people who've been killed this month is terrible as well and uh, I wanted to seek your assistance in um, uh, promoting the seriousness of that situation and just how terrible it would be if it continues. What we thought we'd do though is this, is deal with the IT issue first. I'll say a few words about that. Paul will, then we'll take questions and then if you're able to stay I'd like to comment on the road toll. And then after we've done that, if there were, was any other issue at all that you'd like to raise and that we can uh, respond to, and we're more than prepared to. Uh, well, as you can see in the media release, um, we've identified that um, there was uh, an error uh, in our computer system. It was a human error. It was caused by uh, a contractor who we've employed for six years, who's done a fine job for us in that six years up until now, uh, entering some data uh, incorrectly in terms of a program. Uh, it was part of um, an ongoing program in terms of standardisation of our systems. Uh, we, um, if I by way of background, I could indicate to you that um, there are five uh, entities that we provide information to uh, in terms of the checking of their people. Uh, and those five entities are the uh, Commission for uh, Children and Young Persons uh, in respect of blue cards. Um, the, other, well, the other four areas are the Department of Communities and these are called yellow cards and these are for people who work with people who have disabilities. Uh, so similar to a blue card you have to have a, an authority to work with people with disabilities and that's called the yellow card. Uh, the other areas are the Education Department in terms of the employment of uh, teachers. Uh, Queensland Transport in terms of the employment of public uh, passenger drivers, people such as uh, taxi drivers and, and bus drivers. And uh, the fifth and final area is the Office of Fair Trading who license um, security officers, people who work in the security industry. Now in respect of all of those areas, uh, if you want to get a blue card or a yellow card or be a taxi or bus driver, obviously you have to apply for um, that qualification and um, my understanding is that with all of those uh, you there is a criminal history check a national criminal history national criminal history check that's conducted up front as well with blue card holders and yellow card holders and teachers they are required by law to self-report if they are prosecuted with a criminal offence. Okay, they, they are, there's a legal obligation and requirement on them to self-report. Another safeguard is that quite often the local police uh, quite properly will notify if a blue card holder uh, has been charged with an offence. So the local system works in that regard as well. We have an additional overlay and that is this, that every 24 hours we run a computer check on all of those people who are licensed in those five categories that I just described to you. And as you'll see in the media release, that's almost 700,000 people. Now what happened was that um, back in late May, uh, this glitch uh, as a result of this uh, unfortunate incorrect entry occurred and as indicated in the media release, and Paul can explain this in more detail if you wish, uh, we lost 10 hours each day of, of data capture. Uh, that Initially, it came to light that we probably had a problem with this. Uh, it's taken us a little while uh, to determine the extent of it. It's only been um, as late as yesterday evening uh, that we got the final numbers and that we were comfortable with and sure of so that we could notify the five agencies, and we've done that today. We've also fixed the problem uh, in the computer system, and we're continuing to monitor that. Um, 
What's really important is that there were no child-related sexual offences involved at all. So in other words, no children were victims of sexual offences. Um, the most serious matter, uh, which involved a blue card holder, uh, involved a matter where uh, an offence occurred, it was reported, and the offender, who obviously is the alleged offender, was arrested within a couple of days of the offence being recorded, and that person has been in custody since and remains in custody. So even, that pers even though that person was a blue card holder, that person has not been out in the public space since being arrested for the alleged offence. Uh, as is indicated in the media release, there are a total of uh, 76 people here involved, all told, and if I could give you the breakdown of that for the respective five um, agencies involved. Um, blue card holders are the greatest number. There's 57 persons uh, who are blue card holders, two teachers, two yellow card holders for people who work in disability services, nine people from the security industry, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and six from the um, public transport industry. Now, the information regarding those uh, 76 people has been provided today to those five agencies and they have been asked to expedite the assessment of what they will do because it's their responsibility to determine what happens to these people uh, and to, to do at the very least an initial assessment of that within the next 24 hours. Um, but it, the determination of what happens, so for example with the blue card holders, if the Commission for Children and Young People decide to uh, rescind that blue card, that's their decision, it's not the police department's decision. We only provide them with the information that's come to hand. Uh, and they have procedures and processes in place to do that, uh, which they will of course undertake. Uh, but the request has been made of all five, five agencies, and I believe they've agreed, to ex expedite the initial assessment of that within the next 24 hours. Uh, I don't think there's probably much more I can add at this time, but we'll take questions. And, but, but Paul, is there anything else you'd like to add to what I've said? Um, just to add to the Commissioner, um, the developer uh, left out a small piece of code in relation to the development um, of the system, so that's uh, what occurred. Um, it's later been picked up. Uh, what happened was it was missed uh, during our testing processes. And, and I just want to highlight that, that the small piece of code, that there's a, a, obviously there's a lot of code that's developed by these people in relation to these complex systems and interfaces. It was in the process of updating and enhancing uh, 63 interfaces that we have, and this is only one interface in which um, this trouble occurred. Uh, the issue related really to the time frames, and as the com Commissioner has said, uh, the Greenwich Mean Time issue in which um, it picked up as Australian Eastern Standard Time rather than Greenwich Mean Time, and so there was a 10-hour lag in relation to information going through that 24-hour basis. So 14 hours worth of uh, records or notifications were still being made, there was a 10 hour gap in the data that was transferring across through that interface and that was why it was difficult to pick up through any testing process and indeed there were notifications that were still happening uh, to the agencies. As soon as we became aware of that, uh, the system was immediately reviewed and the fix was um, put into place. It was corrected uh, immediately through, um, through that process. Um, just in relation to our, our future testing processes, as rigorous as our testing and change processes are, we'll obviously review those and ensure uh, that we look at that um, the, the user acceptance in relation to uh, any further enhancements that we make. Uh, we've looked at all our interfaces, we've examined them carefully. Uh, because of the nature of the, of the time frame and the 24-hour search, this was different to any other interface that we had, so it was really a standalone issue in relation to QPS uh, systems. Yeah. The only thing I could probably add is it's possible, but we don't know, um, that the um, Commission for Children and Young People and even the other agencies uh, may already be aware of some of these 76 people because of what I mentioned earlier, that reporting requirement on individuals to report that legislative requirement. But in any event, uh, they're aware of the material now and they've undertaken to, as I said, provide an initial assessment of it in the next 24 hours. OK, okay can we take questions on this issue now then? People who already have blue cards or yellow cards or mm. already 
Yeah, I, look, I suspect that nearly all of them would have already had... Just Can we just talk about the blue card holders for a moment? Um, uh, that they would have already had blue cards. However, it can also include applicants, OK? Because once you apply and make the formal application, you go onto our system. Um, so they may not have even got the blue card. They might have simply been an applicant. Uh, but um, that's a degree of detail that we just don't have at the moment. Um, but we've just felt that um, the priorities were to fix the system and the mistake that had been made, and number two, to identify how many people we hadn't captured until the agencies. So we'll know that in the future, whether they were blue card holders or applicants for a blue card. I suspect that most of them were blue card holders, but I just don't have that now. So they could, sorry, they, they, they could have been approved for a blue card while this was happening? Uh, th technically and theoretically, that's, that's possible, yeah. There's every chance that some of the 76 um, may not have been working with children over that period because the individual agencies might have identified them with the self-reporting that yeah. was going on? Yeah, as I mentioned, um, there are a range of safeguards here. The first for blue card holders and yellow card holders and teachers is the legislative requirement to report if they are charged with an offence. So that is a legal requirement on them. If they don't report, they commit an offence by not reporting. The, the second is often, locally, the police will know the person's a blue card holder and report up through the system. Uh, and then the third one, uh, and can I say that my understanding is that not every jurisdiction in Australia has this final and third overlay that we have, which is this 24-hour checking. We're, we're, not everyone does that, uh, but we see it as a useful you know, addition. So as I said, nearly every 24 hours, nearly every one of these, almost 700,000 people are checked to see if they've been arrested in the previous 24 hours. Of the 76, none of them have child sex offenders in their record, but were any of them violent offenders or violent offences? Uh, th some of the um, charges uh, do relate to what we call offences against the person, uh, which uh, could include assault charges and could include uh, offences uh, such as, or alleged offences, because in many cases these matters won't have been finalised in the courts, uh, such as breaches of domestic violence. There will be a range of issues here, uh, ranging from a driving offence to drug offences uh, to some assault matters. And each agency... And again, this is a matter for the agency, has their own particular set of criteria. So obviously um, for the children's, uh, the Commission for Children and Young People, uh, their criteria may well be different to the criteria for the security industry or the, uh, the transport industry. The process for, for accounting for all these discrepancies now, is that up to the individual agencies or is that... Yeah. The responsibility for the determining, determining whether any of these 76 people lose the blue card, yellow card or licence they have uh, is the responsibility of the individual agency and they have their own set of criteria uh, that determines whether the situation is serious enough to warrant the rescinding or withdrawal of the authority. But the, mis the misnotifications have all now gone out to those agencies, have they? Yes. Yes. I said before that the most senior, the most serious incident was a blue card holder um, who's now in custody. What was the offence? Yeah, that was um, an indecent assault. Uh, the alleged offender is an adult. The the victim is an adult, um, and uh, that was the most serious matter. I think we've actually referred to it um, in the media release that we've given to you. It's the f the fifth last paragraph. And it's the words, uh, the words are a QPS analysis has, has identified that one indecent assault of an adult relating to a blue card applicant, uh, applicant, when, okay, so my old child, this is a person who apparently has applied for a blue card, went unreported during this period. Uh, and within days of that offence being reported, the alleged offender was arrested and has been in custody ever since, okay? Do we know the profession of that person? I'm sorry? Do we know the profession of the, that person? The occupation? No, but I can take that question on notice and if we're able to give you that information, I'm prepared to provide that in the future. Th there's a range of things here today that you'll possibly obviously ask us that we simply aren't able to answer today, but if we can give you that information in the future, we'll undertake to do so. Are you able to say whether or not the offence was in any way connected um, to the reason that we held a blue card. No, well, he was a blue card applicant, um, okay. and uh, it, what my understanding is clearly that it was, and it was an offence that happened in a public place and was an opportunistic type of offence. That's the advice that I'm given. 
Um, and um, yeah, and as I said, uh, within days of the offence being reported, um, the alleged offender, because he's not convicted yet, has been charged and has, re has remained in custody ever since. Can I just get you to explain in layman's terms mm. the, the, the ten-hour window? Like yeah. What yeah. Can I ask Paul to do that? He has a better knowledge of that than I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the the files are searched between two a.m. and two a.m on a 24-hour period, and what happens is there's a, a code in a, in a system that checks uh, the records against the 700,000 people, so it, it goes in and checks. What should have happened if the code was there, it would have checked against the Greenwich Mean Time, which is the all the, the records are actually recorded against Greenwich Mean Time. So what happened was that because the code wasn't there, the system automatically defaulted to what it was working in, which is the SCRAM system, which is Australian Standard Eastern Time. And so therefore the 10 hour difference between the two of those would have been picked up. Now what happened was that because of that 10 hour, hour period between 2 a.m. and midday, it would look at that and those records would actually appear in the day before. So because it only searches against that 24 hour period, that 10 hour period would have been missed because it would have appeared as if it was in the previous 24 hours. So this system is not only checking new applicants, but it's also checking which people should be stripped of their cards. Is that right? It, or have committed it, offences over that period? It's checking everyone who has a blue card, yellow card or licence to be a security person or a public transport driver, uh, and it's also checking uh, new applicants. The vast number, though, of that almost 700,000 people are people who already have blue cards, yellow cards or those authorities. Uh, to you know, drive public transport vehicles uh, or our school teachers. Uh, only a relatively, relatively small proportion would be new applicants. But it does capture that. From the moment people apply, they go onto this checking system. But if their application is unsuccessful, it's an important point, I guess, to add, uh, or they no longer engage in the employment that they're in, they come off the system because there's a privacy issue there about us checking people. You know. So does this mean that those 76 people hadn't self-reported as they were supposed to? They may have. They may have. Yeah, there's a degree of urgency about this for us. Um, the urgency was firstly to fix the system, which we've done. The second thing was to find out how many people uh, we hadn't notified the five agencies, five agencies about, which is um, 76, which we've now done. There's more information we would like to find out ourselves, of course, um, and that is, does, for example, you know, the Commission for Children and Young People already know about some of the, uh, the 57 people that we're telling them about today. They may, but I don't have that information now. The other urgency was to um, tell you, tell the media and tell the public what had happened. We've given a commitment that if we, uh, if we uh, get something wrong, we'll tell you, and um, we wanted to do that as soon as possible. We weren't able to do it until we knew the extent of it ourselves, and we didn't know that till last night. And as I mentioned, I think as Paul mentioned, regrettably, and there's a touch of irony about it, this mistake was occurred because of endeavours of our people to standardise systems and as a result the contractor entered in the wrong um, information and that was the mistake that was made. Uh, so the irony is that by trying to actually standardise and improve the system we made the mistake. You mentioned before that um, it took some time to actually fix it once you, once you it, it, There was an inkling that something was wrong. Um, back in August um, and it took a little while to find out what was actually wrong so the priority then was to fix the system which we did but the next priority was to accurately find out how many people we hadn't reported to the five agencies and as I said it wasn't until last evening yesterday evening that we had that number uh, and, we're, and we've passed that on from information on them this morning and that's why we've gone public now no no the inkling came about through a police officer who was aware of someone um, and saw one of the lists going into one of the agencies uh, and, and didn't see that person's name on the list and said, look, there could be a problem here. Uh, and fortunately it was picked up at what I think is a relatively early stage. I mean, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, it's regrettable, but it actually could have been worse. What, what period do this, does the system check? Like, how far back are we looking at people's criminal histories? Is it five years, ten years? Yeah. Um, the, w when people apply for a blue card, there is a national criminal history check, OK? That's done for everyone who applies. Uh, and after that, um, for all of those people who've got those blue cards and for everyone who applies as well, we run this check every 24 hours. And the concept of this checking, the idea is, is to catch and capture people who get arrested for something after they've got the blue card. Can you say 
say that nobody has been hurt or a victim of, of um, offences by these people at this point in time? Yeah, I'm sorry. Could you just? I just missed the, okay. the photographer was just clicking away beside you, and sorry. I couldn't. No, I just couldn't Can quite hear your question. At the moment that nobody has been been hurt or been a victim of an offence because of this glitch. Yeah, what we well we don't know of anyone. Um, we don't know, um, and um, we know that there uh, are no child sexual offences involved in this at all, which is probably the number one concern. I think the number one concern people would have. Um, but um, the detail of that we won't know until we have further dialogue with the agencies involved. Um, but uh, we are not aware uh, of any um, such occurrence and we are certainly hopeful that there hasn't been. Do you know of anybody who's working in public transport who has uh, been given uh, transport uh, offences? We know who the six people are and we've notified the Transport Department of that uh, and it'll now be up to them to determine whether the matters alleged against these people in terms of the charges that have been preferred under their criteria are sufficient to withdraw their public transport licences. And there's no guarantee that that will happen. You know. Sorry? Any of them serious driving offences? Um, uh, I think there's only one that's actually a driving offence. I think the other matters either relate to um, assaults or, um, or offences of dishonesty of some degree. Uh, but can I say that, that again, it, that doesn't automatically follow that if you're a taxi uh, driver uh, and you've been convicted of shoplifting that you would lose your taxi driver's licence. It may not happen. You know. Does it mean, in Levin's terms, that there was a blackout then for a 10-hour period? Yes, between the, the check is done on a 24-hour basis between 2am and 2am. So at 2am uh, this morning compared back to 2am, what was happening was if it went back to 2am, it would default to Greenwich Mean Time, so that would actually appear like 4 p.m. the day before. So there was a 10-hour so callback. No, not in the system. Not not in. Sorry. You to explain that. Yeah. If uh, sorry, I'm just trying. To, if um, so, between that 24-hour window of, of uh, that we check uh, against these. Uh, in relation to it, there was a 10-hour period where those records were not transferred across, so it, it became a, a window that it was a window of invisibility that we couldn't see anything there. It appeared as if it was the day before. Yeah, that, that doesn't mean. Can, can I just? Sorry, can we just continue with that before we take that question? That doesn't mean that, in any sense, this is only the notification of the five agencies. There's no suggestion whatsoever that our basic criminal history record section was in any way affected by this. All of these 76 people are charged there before the courts with these offences, and there's been no glitch in that process. I'm sorry, could I take your question now? Might be a stupid question, but why why was midnight to 2 a.m. not getting picked up? Uh, part of the problem? 2 a.m. Because it was 2 a.m. to 2 a.m., uh, the 24 hour oh, check, it was 2 a.m. to midday. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No, he hasn't. Uh, he has um, worked for us um, on and off for six years. He's highly regarded. He's mortified by this mistake. He acknowledges that he made the mistake. Um, and our priority. Uh, his, his circumstances and his employment with us are still under consideration, but our priority was to fix the system and then find out the extent of the missed reporting uh, and then to go public, uh, which we've done all those three things and we'll now turn our mind to our employment relationship with the contractor. Is that what's being assessed? Yes, what it does. the reaction of the five agencies in terms of the task that is now before them in terms of... Oh, professionally understanding uh, that mistakes can happen and that's what's happened in this case. And, and might I say again, at the risk of being repetitive, that not everyone, not every uh, jurisdiction in Australia has this additional overlay of 24-hour checking of nearly 700,000 people that we do. Uh, so, you know, I, I, they've been quite understanding at this point in time. And as I indicated, they've been good enough to give a commitment that within 24 hours they'll do at least an initial assessment of each of the people for their respective agencies. Can I ask a question? You always have a lot of faith in the blue card system. Mm. Is, it, is it disappointing for you or what, what's your... Oh, and I think it's a wonderful system, I really do. Uh, yeah. Are you disappointed by the system? 
Yeah. Oh, of course, we're always, you know, when uh, we've got 15,000 people, um, we, we make mistakes. Um, what I've always said is if we make a mistake, we'll tell you about it and we'll fix it, uh, and that's what's happened here. Will you worry, um, will you worry the public's faith? Oh, I certainly hope not. Um, I certainly hope not. Um, I mean, what we're talking about here is 57 people, um, and I can't give you uh, the precise outcome of that. Again, it's up to the agency to determine whether any of those 57 people, I mean, without being presumptuous, clearly the person who was the applicant who's charged with that serious matter, I mean, you would think there's no chance of that person, you know, getting or retaining a blue card, but that's a decision not for me, it's for the, the Commission. Um, but um, we won't know for a little while yet uh, as to whether any of those other... The, the others of the 57, so in other words the 56, uh, have their uh, blue cards taken off them. It's not automatic and each agency has its own criteria. How many? Yeah, the, the, there were 57 people. Some were charged with more than one offence and the total charges were 67 charges. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. In, in respect of the blue card holders, uh, my understanding is that there were 57... Well, sorry, there were 57 of those, either blue card holders or applicants, and the total charges for those 57 people were 67 charges. And how that comes about, of course, is a person could be charged with two drug offences, possession of cannabis and possession of a utensil use of smoke. So one person can be charged with two offences. Uh, in respect of the others, my understanding is that the number of people is the same as the number of charges. So two teachers and two charges, uh, two yellow card holders for working with people with a disability, two charges, nine security providers and nine charges, uh, and six public passenger drivers and six charges. That's my understanding. If there's any correction to that at any time, I'll, I'll come back to you on that. If these 76 people have been picked up, how would it be handled? Would it be up again up to the agencies to decide what is done with these people from there? Is that how it usually works? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and as I said, that's right. And just because, and I'm not downplaying this in any sense, but just because you um, may be charged for a conviction or an offence doesn't mean, depending on, it depends on the nature of the offence, and each agency has its own criteria, so it doesn't mean that you should lose your right perhaps to be a taxi driver, or for that matter necessarily to work with young people. It would depend on the nature of what you've done, uh, and it may well be that, you know, the agency says, well, um, this is not worth taking this person's livelihood off them, uh, or it doesn't mean uh, that they're not suitable to work with children. But, but the criteria is, is, and the responsibility, quite rightly and properly, is, is that of each agency. That person charged with the serious offence, mm. um, sorry, was he a blue card holder or an applicant? I'm told he was an applicant. My understanding is he was an applicant. Yeah. That, I mean, that would have been picked up, surely, before he was actually granted a blue card. Like, the Commissioner for Children and Youth Services is going to be uh, part of the, um, the situation with the blue card is that my understanding of how it works is y you, you should declare any serious criminal convictions that you have when you apply for the blue card. So right at the front gate, if you said, look, I've got convictions for um, indecent assault and rape, you wouldn't go any further. You know, you would be automatically disqualified immediately. Next step is the National Criminal History Check, OK, after that. And then um, uh, the decision is made as to whether the person gets the blue card or not. And then um, if they do, it comes into play legislatively that if they're charged with an offence, they're required legally to self-report. Uh, as I said, there's an additional aspect where many of our people, particularly outside of Brisbane, uh, would report up through the system if they charge someone who they know works with children. As, you know, obviously you have to, you have to have a blue card to work with children. Uh, and then the final uh, measure is the one that we're talking about here today, which is our 24-hour checking process of the nearly 700,000 people that are captured by these five areas. Look, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that there's some things we can't tell you today, but um, certainly we'll undertake, uh, I guess, uh, together with the agencies involved to provide further information um, as that, you know, is established. Uh, are we OK now if we talk about the road time?